uh, it's uh, <laughs> always, and he's got a munchkin in his mouth. With a munchkin. Speaking of munchkins in the mouth, we heard the story through Bob Saget's special. Oh. That your munchkin was in John Stamos's <laughs> mouth. for it was. Uh, yeah. Well, Bob is my filthy Jewish sister. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys I what, love him dearly. So you, this is the thing about Full House that I don't get. Like, you would think that because knobs like me are people you have to talk to on a regular basis as you do your comedy across the country. So then you got to sit in some stupid studio in another town. It all looks exactly like some idiot knob radio guy brings up Full House. But the reason why is because you guys won't let it go. I think you're projecting layers onto me <laughs> yeah. that don't exist. No, wait stupid a second. shows, no, stupid no, no, no. guy. No, me. Like it's like I, you have to do all these radio shows, and you got to be like, oh, enough with the Full House. But the problem no. is, you can't do enough with the Full House so long as the three of you idiots keep getting naked together in limos. And you know what? You know, I told, I had lunch with Bob on Tuesday, and I said, Bob, you know, I'm not gonna like do funny gags for us guys, you know, doing things if you're going to talk about it in every tv special <laughs> right. he talks about my nards in every, every tv one special he does yeah. well in fairness it's tough he, not to it's everyone's nards yeah but you know what i don't think he's ever seen mine i don't you know to I be would quite debate honest that. now I'm he's like, been Bob, here several times and i've heard about your nards in more than one occasion i, I know he's got a fixation with your nards uh, that, that'd be a dixation wouldn't it <laughs> it yes. would be yeah. <laughs> one singular yeah, dixation. that's right yeah so i mean but it's like bob come on yeah what stories do you have on him that you would spill has he ever exposed his nards or dick I, I've station? never wanted to see Bob's. No. I don't know. It would have like a frown on it, you know? <laughs> it would be sad. depressed. It would be depressed, yeah. His urethra is frowning. It would be angry. It would be like a little, the, the little, yeah. you know, the little area there Two would be dots. with tons you know, of guilt. Guilty, yeah. a guilty wiener. Bob has and a guilty, sad face wiener. Under yeah. the assumption, bumpy. Bumpy? Yeah, I just think he's gotten into some <laughs> trouble, and somewhere along the lines, he's gotten a life a lifelong bumps. disease. <laughs> <laughs> I like just speed assume. Bumps? Well, yeah. it couldn't be speed bumps. It's he's speed too bumps, sad to yeah. have any speed but going. But the, the, the basic stories he's told us of the times that he's just taken people back to his house, and just there's been no background check. There's been no vetting of these ladies. <laughs> And then he ends up, uh, she's I, puking all over his foyer, and uh, <laughs> you know the story. I met Bob. I met Bob be way many years before Full House, and then we ended up on Full House together. Right. But um, before we started on Full House, you know, when Danny and Joey were just hanging out, <laughs> uh, one day, I'm living in Westwood near UCLA. Right. I have this little tiny apartment, and there's a bum laying out in a field across the alleyway. And he's got his pants off, and he's looking at a magazine, and he starts to, you know what? Yeah, yeah, tugging. So what do I do? I call Saget, and I go, Bob, <laughs> you're not going to believe this. And I tell him what's happening right outside my window, and Bob goes, I'll be right over. <laughs> so Bob drives over to see the bum, the homeless guy. Because sure. back then you could say bum. Right. Now you have to say homeless guy. Right. So Bob Either way, drives it's a over, masturbating guy. and by then the guy had finished and walked away. And Bob came over and he goes, "You totally lied to me." <laughs> and I said, "No, Stop I swear." It. And I didn't have a camera. That was back when nobody, right. you know, nobody had like cell phones and stuff and you know, cameras. And it was just like he totally lied to me. I'm like, Bob. And he's like, next time he's doing it. He better be there when I come. <laughs> he's, over. he's like the hobo <laughs> masturbation cops. Yeah. Why did you call him first? I. Because it's better to call Bob Saget in that situation <laughs> than the, than so the he cops. So he That's didn't come back and, and try to set up, you know, try to induce the activity again, like leaving right. a little food. I or never, flowers. I never <laughs> a flask, <laughs> flowers, like there. bait him, like yeah, a mouse, bait yeah. him, yep, yeah, like a cheese trap. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I should have left like Playboy or Hustler out there, just kind of scattered around, right? Like, you know, but I don't want that outside my window. How ironic would it be to bait him? But you know how, yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah just kind of I see what movie. you, yeah, I you see where you went with. there. I totally saw you. <laughs> yeah, and it could have been, you know. And what is the safe distance from a homeless man masturbating before you stop calling friends and start calling the authorities? You know, I'm not a professional. <laughs> right. I'm not saying <laughs> you don't know the exact. <laughs> yeah. I think there's there plenty not, there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a calculation in there somewhere. It's like if it's within shooting a firing range, distance, shooting yeah. distance. Yeah, then, yeah. Then it's the police. Otherwise, it's sagging. Yeah, I don't know, but I could, I couldn't watch. Like, I was just like, you know what? I'll watch if if Bob's next to me. I ha I would have to watch through the whole deal. You would. Really? I would even be on the phone with Saget on his drive over. I don't know if it was before the days of cell you phones. You would watch too. the whole thing, and I would give play by play because it's it would fascinate <laughs> but me. But you wouldn't have made the call if it was indoors. It was an outdoor deal. I think that's it the was deal. outdoors because if you walked into your hallway and that guy's in there, yeah, you're not calling. You got to check this out. You're like, I got to get this guy out of here, or right. I'm just getting to my apartment. And Although it's just a guy enjoying his day. Yeah, yeah I say you know? that, and I rem I told the story earlier today about the one homeless guy who's one homeless wang I have seen uh, walked towards me at a building downtown and told me he'd come here from LA to give me the AIDS. 
and it was out. Oh, but, wow. You know, that's not exactly like family. That's not like that, something you're See, you're like, my story is much more adorable. <laughs> yeah, yours, yours, yours I could hug. I literally ran from him because it's like, well, people who say that probably aren't lying. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, yeah. Oh, you and that old yarn. Yeah, that <laughs> like old I'm, I'm put wise tale you're spinning right now. <laughs> so, and then yeah. the other thing you're always associated with, which you're sick of, but I need to know the truth because we've never met you. This is your first time in Phoenix, too. This is. No, I, I was here a year and a half ago at the other improv. Oh, okay. And now it's been totally oh, remodeled. That was and, back uh, when we couldn't talk to you. Oh, really? Yeah, because we were big. Because Stand Up Live uh, came to town. Right. And then they're like, look, uh, we'll give you exclusivity with everything. Right. If uh, you just don't do anything with oh, them. Oh, there I'm was like, a comedy war going on. Yeah, comedy on. war because one was paying for advertising and one oh. wasn't. So we kind of had to go with one. And we actually, you know, we picked the winning team, really. And I got one. caught in the crosshairs. And there you yep. were. And I and I remember, I forgot, that was last year at the Improv. And I remember there was like a list of people. I'm like, oh, we've never had him. Never right. done this. Never had it. So here you are now. Right. And we're talking about homeless guys whacking off. Exactly you, what I dreamed of. You know, I, sometimes <laughs> I'll throw a beautiful story oh, out like that. Gorgeous. Just to see, you know, what people are, run with, you and know. just for people listening, you are not listening to Garrison Keeler right now. As beautiful as that story might have I, I think it, poten- it has potential, yeah. though. I'd like to hear Garrison retell You think it. so? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it is a slice of Americana. It's yeah. got that old <laughs> shopping <Happens>. kind of <laughs> granola kind of feel to it. The wife and I were walking along the lakeside. <laughs> like, oh, here we there go. There I was, staring out at the alleyway. <laughs> and I happened to have my good friend Bob Saget on the phone. <laughs> well, as luck would have it, <laughs> it's oh, it. an old friendly stranger wandered into view. <laughs> it's it's something I don't think I ever want to see. I saw a homeless man's penis with the AIDS thing, and then the only other one that I thought I saw, what I wasn't sure, was a homeless guy with no legs. Oh. And it was kind of out. But I couldn't tell. So if it was... that's not true then. Well, I, know, I couldn't tell if it was a penis yeah, or a, a bubble. Leg. Uh, yeah, a leg. Yeah, but he, was, <laughs> he did. Yeah, I don't know what that was. He wasn't pulling on it though. So your story still trumps mine. Yeah. Now speaking of pulling yes. on that thing, yes. uh, the Alanis Morissette deal. Straighten it out so no one asks ever again. For what, what would you week. like to know? This is really old information. I know, I but I don't her, know it. I dated her in 1992 to 1993 and a half. But everybody says the song then, is the song isn't about you. No one knows. I, that guy in that song is such a tool. Why would I ever admit to that? <laughs> is he right. a tool? Though? You know? Yeah. She. I will tell you, she is uh, an amazing human being. Charming, but if the song's about you, did you you, have a tough break when you stopped? No, it was a it was a difficult slow fade. You know, it was a difficult time in my life. I was a a newly single dad, just gone through a divorce. I had a young son. She was living in Ottawa, Canada, Mm -hmm. and uh, I had met her at the All Star Game in Montreal, the NHL All Star Heroes of Hockey game, and uh, you know, just instantly kind of bonded and and we saw each other long distance and. That was really hard. I mean, it's not like you're dating somebody in another state. Right. This is someone who lives at the opposite end of their country. And it was just, it was so a how tough does, time. How does you that probably rumor... weren't looking for it to, I mean, you're dating her, but I don't know if it was in that space of time where you just came off the divorce. Yeah, you're it not was. looking to get into a serious relationship. She might have been on a different page. It was, like, yeah, yeah. And and I just, uh, What you other know, Canadian really, stars um, did you nail then? Yeah, was it a season of drilling? <laughs> oh, for Brian you? Adams. Yeah, yeah, that oh, there was a back. bum in an alley. <laughs> Canadian know, bums yeah, are better. I was, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't draw a line. There's no, you know, I'm not prejudiced that <laughs> way. no borders. Hey, let me ask you guys this. Because right. it was in my little media rundown sheet, there's supposedly a band here there today. There is. The uh, Redline Chemistry is going to be here in a little bit. Now, I brought my harmonicas. Do, would you? Do you play? I, I play a little harmonica. I wanted yeah. to tell you is this. Is that a Lee Oscar? These harmonica? are both Lee Oscars in a nice. key of C and D. So I got to. If if we can do this, I'll, I'll gladly uh, play. Would you with like the guys. to join in? Do you know the songs? Redline Chemistry. Uh, do, are I you familiar don't. But with if their they want to just jam and play a little blues, I can. You know. <laughs> All right. Let's get them. Oh, Dave Coulier. Yes. That's impressive. There well we go. There we I, I go. had no idea you had that much uh, I got, I got southern soul. Oh, it's not just me staring at bums. Come on. <laughs> now, <laughs> that would have been awesome. We don't hang playing. your hat on that. Now, Did Dave, you enhance his... Uh, yeah. yeah, I would like to uh, hear what it, what the soundtrack would be if you were for him whacking off. Oh, that would be... <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Next stop, Bob Saget's apartment. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. I wanted to tell you this, too, because uh, I dabble in impressions, and you have probably the two greatest cartoon impressions, even better than the 
people who did the voices. Do you ever know, like, an impression is actually, that's a better yeah. version of the actual thing? Like, my friend Dave Thomas from SCTV did a Bob Hope better than yes, Bob better Hope. better than oh. Bob Hope could have yeah. ever done. Exactly. Yeah. And your Popeye is, is the single greatest Popeye since Popeye, oh, and even boy, better. kind of embarrassing. It's oh, boy, weird this because... This guy over here and, and kind of make it fun of me, aren't you? No, because oh. it, seems, it seems so easy to do, and Popeye's so hard. Well, it's not, especially See? this early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's the, it's the subtle you know, nuances of Jack, Popeye. <laughs> Jack Mercer, who did the voice of Popeye, I'm going to connect all this, uh, in the 30s, yeah. also did the voice of Felix the Cat. Oh, really? So I was a big Popeye fan, and then a guy named Don Oriolo, whose father produced the original Felix the Cat series, animated series, in the 30s, said, I'm bringing Felix the Cat back, and I've heard you do Felix the Cat. Will you do Felix's voice? And I said, well, sure, and I can also do Rock Bottom and The Professor. I don't oh, know if you guys remember I Felix remember. the Cat. yes. Felix, where is that <laughs> magic bag? But, Professor, it's my lunch, Poinsy, eaten by a man-eating plant. <laughs> Tell me, I know what Spot kind of plant on. it was, no. and I think the writers on that show were smoking yeah, it. Yeah, they were, they were uh, maybe doing yeah. some other stuff for the kids. But I, I, yeah. I do weird impressions. Yeah. I, I'll do Albert Brooks. No one knows Albert Brooks. Seriously? That's You're gorgeous. holding your hands that's out gorgeous. like you don't know. No, but I you do know. know. Oh, yeah. that's See, that's beautiful. terrific. No one else knows. <laughs> your hair that's is curling awesome. as you're it's doing really it. It's really doing it, isn't it? That's crazy. <laughs> you're, you have a toupee, actually. Oh, I don't yeah. believe it. Really? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> that is great. It's a weird impression. And his brother is Super Dave Osborne, yeah. Bob Einstein. You do a lot of people too. don't know that Albert Brooks' real name is Albert Einstein. Yeah, it's true. And uh, me and my brother, Albert, <laughs> I actually played the Marty Funkhauser character on Curb Your Enthusiasm. And uh, I remember when we were younger, teachers would look at my SAT scores and say, there's no way you, sir, are related to Albert Einstein. <laughs> Weird impress. It's weird impressions. We have some funny uh, oh. Super Dave stories. We well, Norm Macdonald Super Dave story, which is fantastic. I don't know if you've ever heard. Oh, it. I've never heard that one. It's it's better when he tells it. But okay. he tells the best story ever about the. Uh, yeah, it's uh, no, I'm yeah. uh, no, I'm uh, telling the story. He goes, uh, Super Dave calls him on the phone. Turn it to you <laughs> say, turn it to Channel Six, and he's, there's a celebrity softball game on. The L.A. Dodgers goes, celebrity. Oh, uh, okay. Corbin right. Burnson just beans somebody with a pitch, <laughs> right. and he's given play by play in the whole. Right. When Norm tells it, it is outrageously funny. It's the only time I've ever heard Super it's just Dave. Ran- he perfect. gets random calls. Yeah. Your name. It'll just be. Oh really? Yeah. They took golf lessons together, but yeah. every now and then it'll just. Channel six. Yeah, yours is perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> See, and that's what I'm saying. That's right. Do you incorporate Obscure. that all in the act and stuff? Yeah, or? yeah. I, I talk about all the voices that. that people might have heard me do. Like I did Richard Pryor's voice. Yeah. Um, you know, overdubbing his voice when studios figured out they could release his movies on television, but you had to take out all the swear words. Right. So as good of a job as I thought I did uh <laughs> doing uh an impression of Richard Pryor, the uh final product wasn't believable because <laughs> in the movie you heard Richard Pryor saying things like oh shucks mother father <laughs> <laughs> not very believable Jack <laughs> yeah it's there's a perfect. special on Weird. him this weekend on Richard Pryor, he was a, a genius I saw him do stand up when he was doing his old live on sunset strip yeah. uh, set he came to the comedy store and I remember sitting in the back of the comedy store with with Leno and Gary Shandling and and Saget and Jeff Altman and watching Richard Pryor come in and he went up completely naked like no material. Yeah. And people were shouting out old bits and stuff. He's like, I ain't doing that. I, I ain't gonna do that. And he just started kind of <laughs> ad libbing stuff from his head. And eight weeks later, he had an hour. Unbelievable. And it was the most amazing stand up I've ever seen. And yeah. I saw everybody there. I saw, you know, when Seinfeld, yeah. you know, was was really, you know, Back when everybody amazing. Was coming, and coming Jay in. Leno what was he and like, Letterman. And though, I don't know. Did Richard, you get to meet him? Yeah. I mean, uh, you the- know, uh, he was very kind of, kind of uh, not standoffish, but just kind of came in to do his thing and wanted to leave right away. And he had this big bodyguard named Rashawn, and I remember Arsenio came up to me one night at the comedy store, and he said, hey, Rashawn's here with Richard, and he wants to hear your Richard Pryor impression. I'm like, I, I can't do that. There's no way. And so I went over, and there's this huge bodyguard named Rashawn, and uh, he goes, all right, and he's got his arms crossed, you know. And I go, ha, ah, it's good to see you there, brother. <laughs> Don't let anybody kick my ass. <laughs> and he just looked at me and goes, mm-hmm, that's good. That's decent. <laughs> And I was like, thanks a lot, Arsenio. Thanks. He goes, yeah. no, I think he loved it. I think he loved it. 
Yeah. That's great. See? Do you want to stay and play with the band or do you have to go? Does he have to go? You have to do TV. Oh, we got to go. Oh, Big time Dave Cleo. I got to do uh, I wanted to hear you Wake Up San Francisco That's with right. Danny Tanner. <laughs> 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 Whip out your dick for that one. Yes. Make it worth our Hopefully time. Hopefully there's a bum yeah, there. It'll be off. There will be. Close to those studios. Count on it. Bait them. Dave Cleo all weekend long. Tempe Improv. If you want to go 480 921 9877, he will be there tonight and tomorrow. And of course, one show Sunday. We're going to have tickets to give away on Facebook. We'll give them away later. Thanks, Thanks guys. Pleasure. Good meeting you. A lot of fun. Awesome. Awesome. Dave Coulier, everybody. Still streaming. Holmberg's Morning Sickness. Online at 98